Ooh, that right there is saucy off the club face. I don't know about you, but I love when I hit the center of the club face and I dislike when I miss hit golf shots. And I really wanna have a clear understanding when I miss hit golf shots as to what's really going on so I can make the proper adjustments. And I know a lot of you at home probably share that same sentiment. Today is gonna to be a great day for all of us. In fact, today's gonna to be a beautiful day because it's a new year and it is time to start playing some better golf. And playing better golf means you have to have a buttoned up release. Today, I'm gonna to teach you what we call the adaptive release pattern here at My Golf DNA. And this was actually formerly known as the hybrid release pattern. And there is a very big reason why this release pattern has gone through such a significant name change. And the reason for that is, is that most of you know that I've been testing the daylights out of a device called Hack Motion. And I've been testing all of the release patterns that we have available at My Golf DNA. And I can tell you this right now, the adaptive release pattern, I threw every sort of grip type, every sort of skill set at it multiple times over. And all of the players that I threw this stuff at got really, really positive results. This is a release pattern that's designed to work for who you are as a golfer. This is a foundation for the rest of your golfing life that I'm gonna teach you here today. When you're all said and done today, you're gonna to have a big old set of tools and a toolbox that you can take out to the driving range and you're gonna be able to use to make sure that you're practicing properly. So many of you at home don't get the results that you're looking for because you don't know how to practice this stuff properly or because you're trying to skip around and work on the things that you shouldn't be working on. We're gonna fix that today. We're gonna to lay down the foundation and you're gonna leave this video feeling a whole lot better about yourself because you can work on this stuff in the comforts of your own home get it ready for showtime, take it out to the driving range and start seeing what it's like to hit the center of the club face on a much higher frequency. And I know that's pretty exciting for a lot of you. So hopefully you guys are ready to go for a ride. Hopefully you guys are ready to take this journey in this new year and be disciplined. That's what it's gonna take. We're not trying to bite off more than we can chew. We're just trying to get 1% better every time we practice. You got it? Okay, good. Okay, now, so before I jump into all of the detailed specific stuff that we're gonna go through today. And today's video is going to be very detailed rich. It's important that you understand that because I know a lot of you at home have shorter attention spans and that's okay. This video is going to have a lot of details up front and then by the end of the video, you're gonna be able to move through this stuff fairly quickly because I want your time used wisely in this process. So before we jump into that stuff, do me a big favor. If you are brand new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed, head down below, subscribe to the channel and do me a big favor and hit the like button if you like today's video. It's good for my psyche, it makes me feel good. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to post those up below and I will help you out to the best of my ability. So I wanna give you kind of a, a bird's eye view as to how I look at the golf swing because it's probably pretty different with how you look at the golf swing. And a lot of people are trained to look at the golf swing in this sort of manner. We look at it from a setup to takeaway, to backswing, to transition, to impact, to finish, right? I look at the golf swing completely different. I look at the golf swing in two main sections. The sections are, the first one, the most important would be the hitting area. So when the hands get down in front of the trail thigh, the club starts to make its descent down in the golf ball. And when then when the hands exit outside of my lead thigh, that's what we consider the hitting area. Now, some people at home consider the hitting area to be a little bit wider than that. But at my golf DNA, we think about the hitting area being from the trail thigh to just outside the lead thigh. That is the most important area of the golf swing. In fact, that's where I study your golf swing the most when you show up to the website and I start to analyze you because I want to see how you're handling business down there with your entire body, what you're doing with your hands and your arms and what the golf club is doing. And I look at it from different angles so that I can get the best information possible. Then from there, I look at the rest of the swing shape. So everything outside of the hitting area plays a significant role in how you're going to set yourself up for delivering and releasing the golf club. Anything outside of the hitting area on the lead side of the body is just a way for me to be able to reverse diagnose how you're moving in space through the point of contact. That's the way that I look at the golf swing. And a lot of you at home would benefit from taking that sort of mantra or that sort of mentality when it comes to building your swing shape. Today, we're gonna build this stuff down here perfect. We're gonna stay very consolidated. We're gonna stay condensed and we're gonna stay disciplined. Okay, so first things first. I wanna teach you what, when you hear me say the words, a light delivery position actually looks like. And I want you to be very meticulous from this position or getting into this position, I should say. Now, a light delivery position is just basically gonna be when the hands are in front of the trail thigh. Now, we're not gonna have a lot of weight on our lead foot when we're in this position because remember, in the golf swing, we're moving through positions. So what I want is basically to, you to feel 50-50 through your feet. So you're gonna see me talk about these positions from the ground up. So from a static address position, all I want you to be able to do is I want you to basically just take your hands and let them swing back to where they're right in the middle of the trail thigh 
and I want the club shaft parallel to the ground. I want the club head in line with your hands or just in behind it when you look at it from a down the line perspective. And I want you to have just a little bit of flexion in your right arm, okay? Now, from this position, okay, when you hear me say this, what we're gonna be working towards today is getting from delivery to impact and through impact, little small reps. And you're gonna use the contact of the golf ball as a great way for you to know if you're doing this stuff properly. You should be able to hit these little small shots right out of the center of the club face. But before I teach you the movement, what I want you to understand is that the next position that I'm gonna teach you is what you wanna basically take a picture of with your camera at home from face on and down the line. And you wanna use this picture as your baseline. If you go through a set, when I start teaching you how many reps I want you to do in a set, and you notice that you have a few mishits inside of that set, then you wanna go look at your movements, look at them very closely, and you wanna look at those baseline impact positions from both angles, and you wanna see if you can tell the difference with how you're moving. You'll be able to look at it through your shoulders, your head, your spine, your hands and your arms. You'll be able to look at it through the club, and you'll be able to make the little adjustments. That's how I want you to look at things. So the way that I want you to get into a good impact position is I want you to go ahead and take your setup position. And remember, ball position is gonna be very, very important in this process. The ball position should be off of the logo on your chest. Another good way to think about this, and I'm gonna use this a lot in this video, is if you were to draw a line straight down from the lead side of my head, it should be right to the back of the golf ball. Okay, that should be your ball position for every single rep that you do in this process. Now, what I want you to be able to do from this position is I want you to be able to have a normal grip on the golf club. So your normal grip that you bring to the table. And I want you to be able to take your trail hand off the golf club and either put it behind your back or let it rest off to your side. And I want you just to take your hips and I want you just to shift them slightly to your lead side. So now you're gonna feel about 80% of your weight underneath your lead ankle. And I want you to take your belt buckle and I want you just to drop it back slightly. And I want you to turn it open to where your belt buckle is now pointed just out in front of your lead foot. So you've turned your hips open about 20 degrees or so. Not a whole lot, right? The max that we would want our hips to be open at impact would be about 45 degrees or so. So it's basically just cutting it in half. Now, when you make this movement of your hips to your lead side, what I want you to try and do here is I want you to try to keep your hand really quiet and I want you to keep your head really quiet as well. So let's go through that one more time. So you're gonna take your hips, shift them subtly to your lead side. Okay, you're gonna feel about 80% of your weight underneath your lead ankle keeping your lead hand back and your head back. Drop the belt buckle back ever so slightly and turn your hips open so your belt buckle is now pointed just out in front of you. Now, here's the most important part of this release pattern as we start to ingrain it. Your shoulders actually should be square to your foot line as you were at a dress. You can rotate your hips open independently of your shoulders. I want your shoulders to be nice and square and I want your trail arm to be hanging here freely. Now, what I want you to do is, is I want you to go ahead and bring the right hand onto the golf club, okay? So bring it straight across, and I want you to go ahead and make sure that your hands, from your perspective, are all the way in the middle of your lead thigh. That position is the position that you're gonna be trying to move through. Now, what I want you to do is I want you to take a picture of this from face on right now, and I want you to take a picture of it from down the line, and I want you to look at it all the way across the board. I want you to study it. I want you to look to see what your impact position is going to look like. Because if it doesn't look like this at all, when we start moving from delivery to the point of contact, then there's a pretty good chance that you're gonna have some mishits that pop up out of this. Now, we're gonna be eliminating a lot of big movement here anyways. So you shouldn't run into a whole lot of mishits in this first step. So understanding where the delivery position is and understanding the impact position that you're gonna be moving into. Now, it would be very beneficial to you in this process over the next couple days before you start working on big high rep counts here where you just get really comfortable with moving into a good impact position where you're not having to go through all the steps. So what it would look like is, okay. Now make sure that the club is square in behind the golf ball. Okay. That position is what you're going to be moving into and through. Now, I have a little visual set up on the ground here. I have this back ball that's furthest away from the target is going to be basically where my ball position is going to be. This other ball that I have in front of it is about three to five inches in front of it, which is going to be significant for a lot of you at home to understand that this is where the low point in the swing shape would really be. Now, what we're gonna be doing is, is we're gonna be using this sort of visual, this window here, is that we're gonna be 
starting out the process by pulling our hands and pulling the club head to the low point when we start moving through it. That way you have some acceleration here and you can start to feel what it's like to move through the point of contact and have a little bit of a downward angle of attack here. So it's important that you can set up a little, um, a little window here. So you have a golf ball that's gonna be an indicator where your ball position is, and you have a ball that's somewhere between three to five inches in front of it. You're just gonna use that as a visual cue when we start rocking and rolling here, okay? Okay, so now you understand exactly what those positions are supposed to look like. Now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a one to one to one ratio. One practice rep where we're coming down and stopping just to make sure that the movements are correct. Okay, you're gonna have a little bit of tension in your hands and your arms. The next rep is you're gonna release that tension in your hands and your arms and you're gonna move through it. And the club shaft should never be any higher than parallel to the ground going back and parallel to the ground going through. If it's a little bit higher on both sides, that's totally fine. Just keep these golf swings very consolidated because we're trying to be perfect here. The more movement that you add to it, the more chance that you're gonna have the club out of position and you're gonna get your body out of position and that's gonna produce the miss hits that you're battling with in the first place. Okay, so let me walk you through the entire protocol so you can see exactly how I want you to practice this stuff. And then we'll talk a little bit about what you see at the end of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my setup. I'm gonna get the ball position in the correct spot. Okay, lead hand only on the golf club, trail hand just kind of resting off to the side of my body. Belt buckle moves in the direction of the target slightly, drops back, turns open just a fraction, okay? My trail hand and arm are hanging down freely from my shoulders being nice and square. I come straight across and get the club. I move my hands now, okay? Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the hands in the club head all the way to the low point, and I'm taking a whole lot of notice of what I feel and what I see, okay? I'm visualizing it, I'm feeling it. Now I'm gonna try to move from my delivery position back to the same spot. So I'm gonna come back. Okay, it should feel maybe a little bit of tension in the hands and the arms. You're trying to be very meticulous here. Now on the second rep, what we're gonna do is we're gonna release that tension. We're gonna move through that spot without any sort of stopping point. Okay, so we're gonna go back into that. Okay. That felt good. Move into the shot. Visualizing and feeling those same positions. Okay, so good solid contact. That ball went probably 15 yards. Nothing big here, but I did notice that the ball was a little bit to the left, which means there's a pretty good chance that my club face was maybe a little bit more shut. So I need to focus really hard in what my position of my lead wrist is at that first rep when I really come down and make sure that my wrist is in the right spot and the club face is square through the low point. Okay, so watch the adjustment that I make here. Okay. Now, I'm really connected to what I feel in my lead wrist right now. I'm gonna come back. Okay, that felt good. I'm gonna do a rep without stopping. Okay, that felt good too. Okay, ball flew nice and straight. Solid contact there. So you can see that this is a ton of discipline in this process. I'm visualizing and feeling and seeing in my brain about what my body position is in through that low point. Once I feel it, I'm starting to release the tension through that position, let the club do what it's designed to do, let the club go where it wants to go. You shouldn't have enough speed in here to make these big long swings. Let's go through it again. Remember, it's all about getting connected to the body. Okay, focus on what you feel all the way through, right? Okay, so preset, okay. You can hear the contact, it's really good. Now, let's just say you go through a set and you had maybe some miss hits that popped up. What I want you to do is I want you to stop, go look at the camera, and I want you to watch that series of five. And I want you to look at the still images first that you took from face on and down line. Look at it, look at the body position at impact. Look at the spine, look at the head, look at the club head, look at the hands. If you notice anything, right? If you start seeing 
maybe a little less shaft lean, or maybe you see the head is maybe in front of the golf ball or further back than where it was, then you know that, okay, I've got to have that as a supplemental focus point here. You can use that as a way for you to be able to move through the session. I want you to be able to make the correct adjustments. And what it takes to be able to make the correct adjustments is not just necessarily relying on the strike and where the ball is going. You need to be able to back check these things on camera. These little consolidated reps should be yielding very positive results. If they're not, then there's probably something really, really dramatic going on and you want to get it pulled back in and reined in very quickly here so that you're not ingraining something that could potentially come back to haunt you. So what I just taught you is the baseline that you have to have in place in order for you to be able to be successful in this game. You have to have an understanding of how to manage the club face down in front of you. Now, everything that happens outside of that hitting area can set you up for success or can set you up for disaster. But I want you to look at this kind of like, okay, I got to build into this. I'm not going to just go do these little small reps and then go into full swing shape. A lot of you will try to do that and a lot of you will probably get some early success, but that just becomes a band-aid that eventually becomes wet and falls off. Take the time and be disciplined. Work through the adaptive swing shape by just going and starting out here in baseline and then move into kind of nine to three and then eventually once you become a master at that, then move into full swing shape. Now if you need assistance in this process, if you need to work through release drills or you're ready to start moving up and you need assistance, then guess what? You can come over and you can get real live help from me anywhere, anytime, all day long. That's what we're here for at MyGolfDNA is we're here to help you in this process of getting better at this game. I give you a platform and resources in place that are helping you make sure that you're doing this stuff correctly because one of the things that you'll learn in this process is that it's important that you have support along the way to help you understand the little small nuances. If I gave you anatomic absolutes that said this is the way it needed to be, then I'm not doing you a service. Everybody's a little bit different. Teaching you exactly what you should be doing as part of your golf DNA is exactly what makes this golf instruction stuff kind of like the artistic approach that has been lost with a sort of cookie cutter approach when it comes to this. You want instruction that's geared towards you. You need instruction that's geared towards you. You need a plan that's specific to you and your golfing needs and you need endless support. Come join us at MyGolfDNA and let me show you how to get better at the game of golf.